Cases of sexual abuse in the sports industry have been embarrassingly high for years now, with both young men and women stepping forward to name their abusers. But for today's video, it's an entirely different scenario, wherein a weightlifting coach is suing the athlete over rapist claims to test new defamation laws. If you want to know more about this issue, then make sure you keep watching today's video so you don't miss out on the latest. A word of warning, today's video has content that may distress some readers, so proceed at your own risk. Continuing with today's topic, in recent news, a weightlifting coach is suing an athlete over rapist charges to test new defamation rules. The first plaintiff in Victoria to be put through a new legal test intended to weed out pointless claims is a weightlifting coach who is suing a young female athlete 45 years his junior for defamation after she accused him of pushing her for sex. On Tuesday, Robert Wilkes, 68, will make an appearance in the Victoria County Court. His attorneys will make their case for the continuation of the defamation trial involving emails and social media posts made by 23-year-old international student Dory Chu. The young athlete has claimed that Wilkes pushed her into having sex while he was the head coach of the Melbourne University Weightlifting and Powerlifting Club. As a result, Wilkes is suing Chu for damages. Later, Wilkes was barred from school. The allegedly defamatory information, which Wilkes said ruined his reputation and painted him as a serial sexual predator who preys on petite Asian women, was sent to a total of five people. The lawsuit revolves around two emails that Chu wrote to two individuals. One at Powerlifting Australia, the athletic organization Wilkes serves as CEO, and another to one person at Melbourne University. Chu described how Wilkes would contact her and not let her hang up until she agreed he could come to her flat in an email to Powerlifting Australia. He would then claim to have already consumed a Viagra and ask Chu to orally satisfy him as soon as he entered. He would also insert himself when I have clearly said no. Chu also said in her email, Wilkes is also suing Chu for separate social media posts. She wrote to two other weightlifting club members informing them that she had been harassed by Wilkes and requesting information about any further victims. Chu claimed in her email to Powerlifting Australia that after speaking with another girl who she says suffered what she suffered, she felt compelled to report the charges. And no one believed her, so she left the club. She is also a petite Asian girl who I do not doubt trusted the coach and was very vulnerable, Chu further argued. Two of us spoke up. How many more were there beside us? The allegations became more widely known after Wilkes included them in Chu's legal paperwork, which the Sunday Age published. Melbourne University barred Wilkes from its campuses for good earlier this year. After looking into Chu's allegations, Wilkes temporarily resigned from his position as Powerlifting Australia's director as well, but he was later restored after an internal investigation determined that Chu's claims could not be supported. As for Chu, she didn't take part in the Powerlifting Australia investigation. Wilkes must persuade the judge that he was seriously harmed by Chu's publications to avoid an expensive trial. This is required by changes to the defamation legislation that were implemented on July 1st of last year. The modifications were adopted in response to an upsurge in defamation cases in Victoria's courts, many of which were backyard arguments between two people. The new serious injury criteria, according to media attorney Justin Quill of Thompson Gear Lawyers, should prevent small conflicts from coming to court, even though he was unable to comment on the case's merits raised by Wilkes. So far, it is unclear exactly how the criteria will will be used, and Wilkes' action may serve as a model case for such future defamation cases. In a statement, Quill added that whereas harm used to be practically the last factor to be taken into account when determining what damages to seek, it is now either the first or one of the first. According
according to a court in NSW. Where the significant harm standard is in use, the new rule abolished the common law concept that damage was to be presumed and not proven. Quill, an attorney who represents media firms, claimed that defamation lawsuits were expensive to defend, giving a lot of leverage to individuals who brought cases to court. He concluded by adding that almost always, the legal costs in a case dwarf the damages granted, explaining that cases have been brought and that the legal costs incurred far, far outweigh the actual harm that may have been caused by publications. Going back, Robert Wilkes first filed a lawsuit against Dory Chu back in August 2021. Now, let's take a quick look at the events that followed suit. As previously mentioned, student athlete Dory Chu reported her coach, Robert Wilkes, for sexual harassment to Powerlifting Australia, the national athletic organization he serves as chief executive. Since then, the claims have been made in court as part of Wilkes' defamation lawsuit. Wilkes has been placed on administrative leave by Melbourne University, while an investigation into a string of alleged occurrences from earlier this year is conducted. He asserts that Chu's complaint, which was forwarded via email to two individuals and two further texts that were also distributed to club members, painted him as a rapist, s offender, and serial s predator who preys on petite Asian women. Chu, an international student from China at Melbourne University who consented to have her name published in the Sunday Age, claimed that Wilkes started making moves toward her in late March of last year. She asserted that the advances started as a result of her involvement in a conflict within the university club, where Wilkes serves as an unpaid coach. According to court records, her letter of the complaint states, Wilkes told me that he was was the only one on the committee that is truly on my side and that he would help me. This sentiment soon developed into, I have done so much for you. I did all that for you. Why can't you do something for me? And he would ask for sexual favors. From there, Chu stated that Wilkes asked her to orally gratify him after he came to her apartment. If I refused, he would either get angry and accuse me or cover his face and start crying and say I was torturing him, Chu detailed. Wilkes alleges in his lawsuit that he has been active in the powerlifting community as a coach and administrator for more than 40 years. He also mentions his certifications as a licensed clinical psychologist in practice and his design of the Wilkes formula, scoring system for the sport. Chu claimed in her letter that before the encounters, she idolized Wilkes due to his standing in the powerlifting scene, and that after his advances began, she felt exposed and shunned by the club. The student athlete went on to state in her email how she trusted, respected, and loved him as her coach, saying how she was so pleased to proclaim to everyone that Robert Wilkes, the GOAT of powerlifting, the CEO of Powerlifting Australia, that man is her coach. The young athlete claimed that in May, when she finally had the confidence she told Mr. Wilkes to cease contacting her, and he became furious. She continued by recounting how he accused her of various things and said that she had seduced him because he had grown close to her. He charged Chu with being untruthful, perpetually evasive, and passive in the relationship, per court filings. Chu claimed that the coach later made several attempts to touch her, and when she resisted, she claims he barred her from participating in her volunteer club administration positions. In her letter, she said that after speaking with another girl, who she believes suffered what she suffered, she was moved to report the charges to Powerlifting Australia. Court records state that Chu sent an email describing her accusations to two women on the Powerlifting Australia executive on July 5th. Before submitting a writ in court on July 15th, Wilkes answered two days later with a letter letter from his attorneys. The initial email was not sent to the powerlifting coach, and it is not clear from the court records how he got a copy. Chu sent two texts to other club members, alerting them about his behavior toward petite young Asian girls. And Wilkes is also 
taking action in response to those texts. Chu allegedly stated in court filings that she kept quiet about the situation because she feared that no one would believe her and because she believed it would eventually go away. But now that she knows he's done the same thing to another girl that he did to her a few years ago, she claims she can't leave the club because she's afraid he would damage someone else to harm Wilkes's reputation with Melbourne University, the club, and the Australian powerlifting community, Chu allegedly leaked the email and text. He claimed that before she received the emails and text, he ended an intimate relationship with Chu. The member protection policy of Powerlifting Australia, which Mr. Wilkes as chief executive approved, advises against athletes and instructors getting into romantic relationships, even if they are consensual. This is a developing story, so we've yet to conclude this case. And that wraps up today's video. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on for more videos like these. And we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.